and welcome to Arts Warm episode 10. This week's show is a special about dyslexia and will include lots of new work by 13 new artists. Arts Warm, as you know, is a show which showcases new art videos, poetry, music and, well, various forms of visual creativity, all of which have been created brand new for the show. So everything you see is going to be a world premiere, which always makes Arts Warm rather interesting. Many of the videos in this week's show are to accompany an exhibition called Dyslexia, Poetry and Imagination. No, I've not got that quite right, but it's something like that. We will clear it all up later because I'm speaking to Helen Kay, who is organising the exhibition in the mid part of the show. We're going to begin with a piece from regular contributor Andrew Williams, which is a musical piece which is based on one symptom of dyslexia, where left and right are confused he decided to make a piece of music which combined forwards and backwards music to create a soundscape which had left and right confusion built into it. And he accompanied that with a, an electronic visualiser which also had swirls and confusion. And now to poems from our special guest of the day, Helen Kay, with visuals by Ryan Kay Derricott. This is a duo about the elderly Prima Gravida. Elderly Prima Gravida talks to her dyslexic son. Once upon beginning lips gave you my word, but I was dissolved in a din of voices. You did not crawl, because left and right were stillborn words on planet U. At the crash, you fled from gaping toddlers, their lexical smother of paint on salt dough. You loved a wall chart where the spots made numbers, and you burst out, one, two, three. Made guilty by experts, I shawled you in talk, Lego's syllabic logic, bricked up your silence. I hope you loved my ning nang natter as I the seedling syntax of your face. Elderly P and son at the library. He hugged the books, their colour felt the way they slotted together, filled mum's beanbag lap as she read. They rubbed the false fur tigers, pulled the pop-ups until they tore. Back home they would act out Aladdin. 
only when the words trilled read he shut up this murmuration of marks put them in their place upon a shelf and now a spoken word piece by andy nicholson uh, I've sent lots of different poems by Andy and some had special effects applied to them and some were plain and I thought it'd be interesting to combine the two. So you're about to hear a short poem in plain speech and then a repeat of the same poem with lots of words echoing and reverberating around to create a sense of confusion. Calloused for at my child in the early 1980s. The message was always the same at school and college. Chiselled in size and invisible subconscious put-downs. Dismissing all of my inability to catch a ball in games. And getting my story in English back to front. And almost everything else is just stupid and clumsy. Holding me back for like 20 years without realising. Calouse, for it my child, the message, the message is the same, at school, school, chiselled inside, visible, subconscious, dismissing all of my ability to catch all of the game. And getting my story and getting my story back to back to back. And almost every other just stupid, stupid, stupid. Holding it back to back to back. Many of the contributors to Artswarm this week are new to Artswarm, and we now present two poems which are all about the struggle with dyslexia. There can be two or more spellings for words that sound the same. Some may think that it's simple, to others it's not as plain. It's really not so easy to learn to read and write. One might be good at sums and get the figures right, and know that four in four makes eight and one in one makes two. Poor marks each week are such a bore and make me feel quite blue. Our English homework this week is to learn our thoughts to rhyme. I won't waste your time with a cup of tea. I'll just pour a glass of wine. Whether the weather is sunny or rough, where it rains or hails, I'll never tire of a trip to the sea and a beach in the heart of Wales. If I rode a horse by the shore and dipped my toes in the sea, then saw a boat sail by and tie up by a boy or the quay. As night gives way to morning, I could stand and stare for hours. I can't wait to walk through the garden and smell the scent of the flowers, see the glorious shoes of the sweet peas that I sowed at the end of Lent. We could meet in the lane by the pear tree. Its bows are bowed and bent. I've missed the sight of the crowing cocks and the mail delivered each morn. This is the place where I feel at peace, where I've lived since I was born. What a load off my mind. I've peaked and without shedding a tear. The die is cast. It's quite a feat. I think I deserve a cool beer. My tutor will not need her red pen. Of course this could make her day. As I've run it through spell check, who knows, I may even get an A. This poem is by Mandy Howell. Life is simple, but not for me. It isn't easy doing ABC. It's always on my mind. Hard to do my work, I find. Reading, writing, spelling. Do I really have to do it? Not being able to read, write or spell. Living in this bubble of hell. I try to escape the thoughts and strife. No one knows my secret life. All the struggle I face each day. Dyslexia is real and it won't go away.
And next we have a poem about the anxiety of school. Secondary school, the five-year sentence. Different has twin Fs. He sees them as wasps, special, not loved, waiting to sting him in the spelling test. Jam stains his word list. Get back! He loves his rock and roll with toast. He sings in perfect pitch. You once belonged, yeah! Time for departures. His rucksack's Nike swoosh ticks him to go. The teacher's rattling dice will shake his day. Panicked, he packs in every book in fear of his forgetting. Zips, gag on letters home, unfinished work, mushy banana. A reek of sports shirt leaks his self-esteem. The door spits him out. A bent question mark, a humped ampersand. In the street, he stutters on the curb's teeth, crosses. The pavement dribbles him away. The day's uphill roll ends. Mouth stuffed with words, his school bag blocks the hall. He weeps behind the couch, lips sealed. And to join me with special guest Helen Kay to talk about the exhibition which is somewhat themed around this week's arts form. And it's entitled Poetry, Dyslexia and Imagination. Not Dyslexia, Poetry and Imagination, which I formally said. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. These things are simply words, which is what the exhibition is all about. That's right. And Confusion of Words, which is a, a, a clever way I've done that with this particular show. So. Tell us about the exhibition. What is it? Well, the aim of the exhibition has um, uh, two, two aims, really. First of all, I wanted to raise awareness about dyslexia because we often think, well, we know about it, so we don't have to do anything. But actually, it's, it's important that people still have that voice. But more importantly, I wanted to get away from the idea that all dyslexic people hate reading and writing. In my research, I found that there's loads of dyslexic people who love reading and love writing and there are some amazing famous poets like W.B. Yeats and Benjamin Zephaniah who are openly dyslexic mm. and very good at writing. That's very interesting. So what's your connection with dyslexia? It's multiple really. I'm a dyslexia tutor. I live in a dyslexia household and um, I've also written a whole sequence of poems myself about those experiences of dyslexia, hmm. um, which was a sort of catalyst for the whole exhibition, but I didn't want to just do something about me. Hmm. I wanted to give other people a voice. And I wanted to get away from the celebrity idea that, oh, you can all overcome your dyslexia and be like Richard Branson. I wanted ordinary people perhaps non-poets to have a voice hmm. uh, and that's what the exhibition is about. So the exhibition combines not just poetry, visual arts as well and, that's and right. even music and sound and all sorts of things. I, began to, I began to think in a very sort of lateral way that this isn't just a, just a room full of poems might not be the most um, inviting or dyslexia friendly thing. Hmm. So we thought that by using different media, film, music, art, cooking, anything. It's all about the imagination, which is why I put that in the title. Mm. So this exhibition is going to run in Crew Lifestyle Centre for a week. And did you say it was made to, to other places as well? Well, at the moment, it's going to be there for the Crew Lifestyle until the 10th of August. And then on the 21st of August, we've got one day in Manchester Central Library. Oh, We're also hoping fantastic. at some stage to get it to Affleck's Palace. Oh, that will so, be quite amazing. Watch this space. So if anybody wants to see it, you've got a poster there as I well. A indeed. fly which has some details. Oh, waft it around there. So that opens this Saturday the launch at is 11.30. This, yeah, the launch is this Saturday, but 
basically it'll be open in, in the library hours which is 9 till 7 for the whole of the week and I will be there and guarding the, the precious artworks uh, and available to talk to people. There will be a few interactive things as well and it is child friendly. Oh that's that's really interesting. Oh well we'll look forward to seeing that exhibition then and there'll be some performances. Po poets will read their performances right. on the opening as well so that's going to be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you for that. Thank you very much, Mark, for all your support with this. Well, that's OK. Now we can continue some of the dyslexia-inspired poems and dyslexia-inspired videos in Old Swan. And next we have a poem which connects spoken word with words and actions of the hands using the metaphor of a Ouija board. We make a Ouija board, a piece of paper, alphabet scrawled across a blank page. Later, we lay our hands on a recycled Nutella jar. It is through our hands that we decipher what we hear. The first nudge between our fingers makes our stomachs busy. We ask and are answered by the committee of our hands. Who are you? I am lonely. Apparently our bodies rot, but our words rot slower. I hope no one uses a Ouija board when I'm dead. Don't want them to confuse what I think for what I said. Well spelt out. I'd move the glass, like that magic trick where you spend a moment jumbling up three cups. Leave the audience guessing. Which one hides the ball? Only for them to lift up every cup and find nothing at all. And next we have my contribution on the theme of dyslexia. I began with a poem about a maze and being lost and wandering around and gradually this became a maze of lettering and learning to write on the board so I decided to make a video which related drawing and writing to reading and being lost. I found myself in a maze, lost, lost in spirals, lost, lost. dead ends with curious topiary, moonlit bridges. I found paths that curled and twist, made from curious topiary, moonless. The sign said a curious jumble of shapes that curled in spy Where was I? I found myself lost.
And now a poem by Katie Haig, which illustrates a similar maze-like struggle. That's an arm for me by Katie Haig. Back to front, upside down, words that dance and move around. Small fonts will make me frown, but that's the norm for me. Long numbers changing place, times tables make my heart race. Sequences are hard, I'm no database, but that's the norm for me. Mishearing words creating some new, I call it poetic license, it's the best thing to do. So I go with the flow, there's no need to boo, because that's the norm for me. Dyslexic brain, creative mind, I am who I am, coping mechanisms I can find. After all, I'm not alone, many dyslexics have rocked our world. That's the norm for me. Next we have a short video poem by Helen Kay which uses stills and speech and sound to create a video poem. It starts with an empty tight lip jog or a foggy eviction from my narrative. Familiar names are clinging to my tongue. I lose my spectacles and wash my purse. A slush of turnips blackens in a pan. Others fear dementia. I was born misplacing. Mid-stairs purpose waves goodbye. I float. Quiz time, I parrot an answer, claim it's mine. At night I lie awake to rescue hunches that it started with a P or was it a K? Next day fills with Mrs. Malaprop, what's it pen drives, brilliant crib sheets. Only the key things forge the neutral pathway. The days that leaked, the saltiness of now, the dregs of pain, the scent of being loved. And next we have an all-star cast as Chris Boyle sings Texting Dyslexia. You're 
Jones. Alexia Sestensia. I'm texting to see. We end our swarm with a short story about coping with grief. The phone began ringing. Raven knew that it would be Cara checking up on her. She had done so since her husband Tony had died of cancer. She really didn't want to talk to anyone at the moment. She wasn't ready to face the big cruel world that had so cruelly taken the only man she had, had loved for herself. He had been diagnosed with terminal cancer for two, two months ago, and within the week, knowing he had died. Tony was the love of her life, and now she was alone. Raven had no family. She had been abandoned at age three, and had been sent from one foster home to another until she had been 18. She had gone to college to train as a counsellor, and while she was at college, she had met Tony. To say it's a fallacy to fall in love the moment that you meet someone, but that was how it had been when their eyes had met. It was love at first sight. He always called her his little raven, because her hair was black as raven's wings, he would say. She would laugh, that's my name, silly. And he would always reply, and yes, it suits you, my little raven. It always filled heart with love, and now she was so alone, so very alone, and in love. Her very sunshine had gone, and so had her faith. At the funeral, she had screamed, why did you have to take him? Why have you left me so alone? That had been a week ago, and since then, she wouldn't, couldn't speak to anyone. Cara had phoned every day at the same time and she never responded to her calls. Cara had even arrived at the flat, banging on her door as though her life depended on it. Cara is Tony's younger sister by two minutes. But she had her face. She looked, how could she face her? She looked just like Tony. Golden blonde hair, and eyes sea blue that twinkle and dance when she spoke. Yes, just like Tony's. His would twinkle and dance before he even uttered a word. Tears trickled down her cheeks as she sat quietly on the bed with her hands folded on her lap, with a longing gaze. Although she was looking out the window, she wasn't seeing anything at all. She had longed to be held so intense, it manifested as a pain in her heart. Maybe if she had done something wrong, maybe God thought it, she was unworthy to be happy. And that was why he had taken her Tony. She had even contemplated suicide to join Tony wherever he was. She didn't know how she was going to live without him. All she wanted was for someone to hold her and tell her everything was going to be okay and that she was going to get through this. Raven started to pray. God, if you were there, show me that you still love me. I know that you do. All I want is for someone to hold me. Suddenly, Raven felt arms surrounding her and then she had the sensation of wings folding around her, holding her tight, protecting her and being loved. Loved so unconditionally, perfect love and peace. And the feeling that although things are bad, it will get better and that she would have a life even though Tony's no longer with her. But the most important thing was that she is loved by God and her angel. No matter what, she will always be loved.
And that's it for episode 10 of Art Swarm. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, many thanks to my special guest, Helen Kay. You will also find that some of this week's shows or some of the dyslexia-themed poems fitted into the previous Rocks show, episode 9, so you may like to check out Rocks too. Uh, my name's Mark Sheeky, and if you'd like to contribute to Art Swarm, then you can look up Art Swarm on Twitter at Artswarm TV. You can also find the Artswarm page on my website, MarkSheeky.com, for all the terms and conditions and how you can send me things. Because the whole thing about Artswarm is it's made by you. It's made by ordinary people. It's made by artists. It's made by anybody who'd like to make something new on a particular theme. Next week's theme is connections, and I look forward to seeing what people come up with for that. I'll see you next time.